Hi, and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, the two chapters we're reading today are Judges chapter 9 and 10, which outlines the story of Gideon's kids. So Gideon, after he had finished defeating the Midianites, pretty much spent his life building a massive family. He had lots of wives. He had 70 sons by his wives, let alone the daughters. And then he had a slave woman who he had intimate relationships with. And he had a son called Abimelech from her. And it looks like that while he was alive, his home was pretty peaceful. But then he died. And chapter 9 outlines what was left behind. I often wonder what my children are going to have left behind when I go. Uh, you know, when you get to my age, you begin to wonder, what is it that you've deposited? Well, behind me are some pictures of some really fun times I've had with my daughters and my son-in-law. And I trust that not just the fun, but also the values and the faith and the, the time we've spent together will carry on over the years. But for Gideon, things ended abruptly. And it, it all centers around his illegitimate son. Imagine the pain. Imagine the poison that was being festering inside that boy as he grew up. Well, I'll tell you what, when his dad died, it blew like Hiroshima. He went to his mom's village, Sheshem. He rounds up people and he says, listen, do you want those 70 boys of Gideon to lead you? What about me? I'm your flesh and blood. And after all, I was son of Gideon. He said, no, we'll, we'll, we'll go with you. So he arranges at a price of 70 pieces of silver, the murder of his 70 brothers. The younger one escapes. Anyway, when he is being crowned as the leader of the region, the younger son, Jotham, comes back and he shouts from a distance. He says, my dad was nothing but good to you. Now look what you've done. And he calls this curse on them and says there's going to be fire between Sheshem and Abimelech who's trying to lead them and all the people of the region. And then he disappears. He flees for his life. Well, for three years, it looked like Abimelech's life was pretty cool. And then it happened. A guy called Gold arrives and he creates a stir in the region, turns the whole of Sheshem against Abimelech. Abimelech hears about it. A war ensues. He comes, attacks Sheshem, but he's bloodthirsty. He turns on his mother's family and he obliterates the entire place, kills a thousand people in a, in a tower. Then he goes to the ally of Sheshem. He tries to do that too. And a, and a woman throws a milsa onto his head and to his terminal. So he asks his armor bearer to kill him. Tragic, tragic story. But I ask myself, what can we learn from this? Well, firstly, let's look at the people of Sheshem who entertained a man with poison, who entertained a man with hatred. Uh, they set him up, they used him, but then he turned on them. You know, whether you're in business, whether it's a friendship circle, be wary, wary of people with poison, people that have got hatred in their heart. Didn't end well for those at Chesham. What about the brothers? Well, the brothers, after dad had died, perpetuated the separation, didn't they? They lived one place, Abimelech lived another. They kept their status, they kept their privilege. And, you know, this is the story of history all over the world, isn't it? You oppress somebody, you put them into slavery, eventually it blows like a volcano. And those boys did nothing to pull out an arm and, and pull Abimelech into the family. They perpetuated the folly of their dad. Well, it, it's just crazy. If we allow in our work environments, in our living environments, in, in our in our societies, this huge disparity and, and, we, and we allow pain and we allow separation, to, it eventually blows. Let's look at the folly of Gideon. I mean, he did not need another sexual partner, did he? He did not need another slave. And, 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 and once he, he did that and he had that kid, why leave that kid? your own flesh and blood to stew in his pain and his alienation and, and look after your favorite 70 boys. It was something that was going to turn around and destroy his entire family. And so 
yeah, for me, I look over my shoulder and I think, who is it close to me? Who is it in my work environment? Who is it around me that, that is being left out, feeling alienated? Uh, not, not cool if you can see those to leave that like it is. And then maybe Abimelech, let's just end with thinking about him for a moment. Darkness came into his heart. Pain came into his heart. He nursed it. He rehearsed it. He, he lived with it and he didn't deal with it. He didn't deal with the pain. He didn't deal with the hurt. He didn't deal with the problems. And because it went darker and darker and darker until it ate him. It ate him alive. Uh, if you've got pain, if you've got hurt, if darkness comes upon you. You need to deal with it and deal with it quickly. Uh, anyway, uh, it's a, quite a tragic story. The next chapter outlines a couple of other uh, judges ending with a guy called Jeff. Jephthah, and we will see him tomorrow, not unlike Abimelech, but a far, uh, a far different ending.